پادکست. Welcome again to the AI Summit in Sarajevo, Kids the Future. Uh, today in my studio and currently sitting Mr. Arjun Avaidi, uh, the compliance officer and head of the risk in the Asma Capital Investments Company. Uh, welcome, Arjuna. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, I would like to get uh, an overall perspective of uh, what is Asma doing in the world and what are the main topics that you are covering. Sure. Yeah. So Asma Capital Partners is the fund manager of the IDB Infrastructure Fund 2. Um, the fund invests in core plus uh, infrastructure projects uh, across the Islamic world. Um, we have uh, we invest on behalf of five sovereign entities, which is uh, the sovereign wealth funds of Saudi Arabia, the sovereign wealth funds of Brunei, the government of Bahrain, the pension fund of Saudi, and uh, the Islamic Development Bank. So you know, we have various investments in power, in water, uh, healthcare, uh, education. Uh, and so on. Um, my part uh, within the company, as you said earlier, I had the uh, risk, compliance, and anti-money laundering uh, functions of the company. Um, so essentially, I work with the portfolio companies or investee companies. You know, uh, help them navigate these uh, regulatory waters. Also, you know, compliance responsibilities for our fund manager. Uh, make sure we're in line with the uh, rules from the rule book, and you know, so on the big guys yeah. who, who are approving or not approving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I believe that you are the right uh, person for the topic that I have uh, for our conversation. And basically, it's uh, the negative aspects of mm -hmm. the AI. That's something that I want to cover. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really important to cover it from the perspective of a person that is there to protect the business. Right. Because usually, uh, from the sales divisions and those who are uh, trying to bring as much money mm -hmm. as possible, uh, they look at the compliance people mm -hmm. as negative ones. Yeah. But in fact, my perspective is that people from compliance and ethics and business risks are the ones who are there to be the, the mind of the company and to save it in the long term. Yeah. So uh, that's why I want to get a perspective on the everything that's happening in the, in the AI world and in the IT world, of course, uh, from someone like you uh, who sees the, the, the dangers, let's say, mm -hmm. of everything that's happening. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good point. Because like you said, I think there's a fine line between, uh, you know, regulation and uh, also commercial interests of a company. You know, like you said, some people see compliance as, you know, trying to stop business or trying to stop commercial interests for companies when uh, it's not really the case. You know, you need to mitigate these risks in order for companies to be successful, avoid regulatory fines. And, uh, you know, so for me, um, we work with portfolio companies and, you know, these, as I said, in the infrastructure industry, there's obviously several risks with AI, but maybe ones we can focus on that I think are like the biggest ones are uh, within data protection and privacy and um, AI uh, biases uh, and, you know, the somewhat discriminati discriminatory nature of, of some of these AI models. So uh, if we look into data, data privacy, um, data for these models is essentially, it, it's, you know, brought from various sources using a technique called data scraping, say. Um, but ultimately, where is this data coming from? It's coming from you and me. You know, they're using public data in order to train or fine tune, you know, these models. Um, so, for example, in, you know, our infrastructure industry, if we're investing in a manufacturing company or assembly of parts or, you know, self-driving cars, you know, for example, within that industry, manufacturing or assembly, you know, robotic arms are moving objects or assembling objects. They need to know how much pressure to use on a particular object, how little force to use, you know, um, the fluid dynamics of that object, how it's going to move on this assembly line. And all that is, you know, they're using big data to train those models to do that. Similarly for, say, self-driving cars, um, these cars need to have traffic data, be aware of its, you know, spatial awareness, pedestrians, so on, um, navigation around the city. Uh, what ultimately happens is, in both these cases, to have some sort of safety measure is they use cameras, right? So there's a camera on the robot as it's navigating through a factory, for example, or, you know, these cars are self-driving using cameras. Uh, an unintentional consequence, I think, of this is that 
these can capture images of people, say workers in the factory or pedestrians, families, children around the area. And uh, here in Europe, we have uh, GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation. In uh, Bahrain, in our home market, we have the Personal Data Protection Law. And uh, one of the crux of both these uh, regulations is informed consent. Mm -hmm. So people need to be, uh, you know, people need to consent to their data being collected, their data being processed, uh, you know, uh, what, what's going to happen with their data, the option to delete that data uh, if possible. And, you know, if your likeness is captured by um, these kind of cameras in there, is that a violation of privacy? It can be, you know, maybe while using an app or you're signing up to this self-driving car initiative hidden somewhere in this terms and conditions, there's something about it, but is that really informed consent? And no, in Europe and in Bahrain. Um, I think uh, this, is, this is obviously, you know, uh, negative, but if you think about the consequences coming back to our industry is um, the regulatory fines for violations of GDPR can be uh, off the top of my head is up to 20 million euros or 4% of a company's revenue. Uh, in Bahrain, you can do prison terms for, uh, you know, individuals connected or, you know, leading management, uh, leading data privacy. Um, so, you know, obviously the consequences are huge, not just then for the companies, this kind of flows back into us as investors and especially representing sovereign investors, the reputational risk is huge. Um, and, you know, these fines uh, hurt us in the pocket, ultimately. Yeah, and uh, when you were speaking about uh, the, the, the whole bunch of autonomous cars and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, I come to one um, dilemma or let's say a yeah, paradox. Uh, and let's imagine <clears throat> there is a, you are sitting in your autonomous car, mm -hmm. driving with your spouse, with your kids, and right in front of you, there are three lanes. Mm -hmm. And basically right in front of you, there is a car with, let's say a truck driver inside mm -hmm. who might have his also his wife going mm -hmm. with him. On the right side, there is a car with a family and the newborn inside. On the left, there is a motorbike with a guy and the girl who are just to be married. Mm -hmm. So everybody on the road is somewhere in their happy moments mm -hmm. going forward to the future. And in the moment, uh, the truck driver in front of you is uh, braking really, really aggressively. And uh, your car needs to decide what to do, whether to go right further in, in him, go on the left side and kill the motorbiker with his mm -hmm. lady, or go on the right and kill the, the family with the newborn. I mean, it, it's absurd mm -hmm. and it's really uh, the, the, the pessimistic kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But my question is, who decides there mm -hmm. who lives? Who is deciding on the fate of us? And this is something that maybe goes into the line uh, altogether with what can it, what can it do in, to the company, to the mm -hmm. investor? Uh, can it dig so deeply that it starts making decisions instead of us? Mm -hmm. No, that's, uh, honestly, that's a great question. Yeah. And um, you've really hit that ethical nail on the head because yeah. there is no right answer. Let's yeah. put it that way. You know, yeah. you're killing a family or yeah. you're killing people. And, you know, there's really no right answer there. And that's interesting because, um, yeah, it's hard, to, it's hard to train these models because, you know, uh, I think ultimately we need an element of human decision making, but even as a human, that's a hard decision yeah. to make. Do you kill, you know, say yeah. there was one life at risk yeah. versus 10 lives, you know, yeah. one option is arguably better, but not a path that we want to go, yeah. go down uh, ultimately. So um, just getting back to it on the whole, I know, you know, your question is slightly different, but I think there needs to be an element of human decision making yeah. within all of this. And uh, to me, it starts at the top. I think tone at the top, the board, chairman, governance wise, I think that's crucial because, you know, you look at these companies and a lot of them have, you know, older men on the board uh, who, you know, need help setting up their iPads, uh, you know, getting into a meeting. Yeah. And, you know, these people are Converting ultimately to PDF. <laughs> exactly. Ultimately, these people are making decisions on products, you know, so novel in this nascent area of, you know, AI and technology. Um, 
So I definitely think we need to see more diversity there in people in the know being uh, represented on boards um, in order to make the right decisions for the company going ahead. Fully agree. Fully agree. We can we we have to find a way to control it, but in a in a manner that uh, we don't let the bad guys mm -hmm. don't misuse it. Yeah, so, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and uh, for let's say for the end question for the last one, uh, how do you see the future in regards to the uh, investment banking industry mm -hmm. in general uh, in the Middle East uh, comparing to let's say Europe? Mm -hmm. uh, why I'm asking this question is because uh, over the past two years, as I'm working for a big corporation, I see a trend of the Eastern people uh, moving uh, from the European people living in big hubs such as Madrid, such as Dublin. Mm -hmm. They tend to go and uh, change their lives and roles and go towards the Middle East. I mean, Dubai is the is major because because it has all of the hubs, mm -hmm. but. Uh, European uh, workforce is starting to migrate towards Middle mm -hmm. East. So uh, from that context, I would like to ask you the, let's say, a future question of oh, what's yeah. going to be happening. What are um, the trends? Yeah, uh, I think that's interesting that you, yeah. you uh, say that. I think there's different elements at play here. Um, maybe one that you, you're, you know, the obvious one, I think, is there's no income tax in yeah. the Middle East. So. You know, I think that draws a lot of people in there. Um, but second to that, when you're talking about a place like uh, UAE, Dubai, for example, they're really positioning themselves to be at the forefront of everything. You know, they want the biggest, the best mines, you know, and, you know, growingly Saudi Arabia is like that as well. You know, they have the money, we're going to put it in and we want the best of the best. So I think that kind of, uh, you know, Europeans seeing that, you know, they're already trained. Maybe, maybe, perhaps we uh, as a country might not have the, you know, brightest or have have the best training institutions. But, you know, you have some of the best training institutions here in in Europe, in the United States. So, if we can get those kind of minds to come in and develop the country, why not? And they see it as an opportunity because um, maybe in the European market things are more developed. But you're then given an opportunity to really start something special mm -hmm. in the Middle East. You know, mm -hmm. this is from ground up. Yeah. You're responsible for the development of this technology, and we're, yeah. you know, we'll give you the best tools to equip mm -hmm. yourself for it. So I think uh, that's really what draws draws yeah. these kind of people to come. In fact, we are kissing the future. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Well, and I believe this was amazing. Thank you so much. Thank and, you so much for having me. And once again, welcome Bosnia. to Sarajevo. Please enjoy it. Beautiful city. Yeah. Beautiful city. Yeah. Yeah. We'll make it. We'll make you enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah. yeah.